This is my ranking of Resident Evil's remakes, examining each game's strengths and weaknesses, and ordering them from worst to best. 3 is the least satisfactory of Resident Evil's remakes, and it breaks my little English heart having to say that, as the original is one of my absolute favourites. I recently did a deep dive into the good and bad of Jill Valentine's most recent adventure, hit the card on screen now to have a look-see, but I'll summarise here as best I can while trying not to burst into floods of tears. What makes this game such a kick in the nuts is that there are loads of elements of it that are exactly what you'd want to see from a remake of 3. The first few scenes give insights into Jill's PTSD following the horrendous Spencer Mansion incident, helping further humanise her compared to the original, and the brief portion of Raccoon City streets you explore almost immediately after is stellar. Civilians flee in panic, a helicopter crashes ahead of you, zombies burst through barricades, and in general, it's complete chaos. You can even spot the capsule Nemesis arrived in. It's as speedy a view of the carnage unfolding as you could possibly get, with no more than 10 minutes or so passing before you're pulled away from it, but you soon enough find yourself above ground again for an even better section. Those cheeky beggars at Capcom repurposed some of your time exploring the city for a demo, and once you've played the full game, it becomes obvious why. Searching the streets and eventually being confronted by Nemesis in an open environment is really, really good. The modern take on 3 many of us had dreamt of. It's fast and frantic and frightening, with the baddie in Black's presence almost overwhelming at times. Thankfully, the dodge mechanic makes a return to give you a way of escaping even the stickiest situations unscathed. In the 1999 version, it was possible to get good at dodging, although I never managed it myself, but it could be inconsistent and consequently frustrating. In the remake, it's been greatly simplified with a single well-timed press of a button allowing you to dodge incoming attacks, after which time slows so you can unleash a volley of your own. Many of 3's characters have, well, a lot more character than their original incarnations as well, in terms of both design and dialogue. Jill's new look is perfect, and she has the personality to match, and Carlos's flirty demeanour, which I always thought was at odds with the terrifying situation, has been noticeably toned down, making him much more bearable. Carlos, Tyrell, you have your orders. You need to go back out into the city and find Nathaniel Bart. This isn't the last ride out of town, right? Do not worry. Once the civilians are safe, the train will be back. It's all right. You're going ahead. I'm not going to die on you and leave you in a cold, cruel, Carlosless world. Okay. Fellow UBCS soldiers Mikhail and Tyrell are handled well too, and Nikolai is a fairly decent villain, even if he can err uh, a tad on the cheesy side at times. I should add now, before I let the hate flow through me, that I have always had a good time across the game's three to four hours. You can finish the whole shebang in a single afternoon, and I've enjoyed doing just that on several occasions. If the same title were to be released without the Resident Evil branding as a standalone experience, it definitely wouldn't have received half the criticism that it has. Unfortunately, it is a remake of a Resident Evil, and one of the most popular entries at that. Examining 3 through that lens, it's very easy to understand why so many were so disappointed by it. For starters, it glazes over so much of what makes the original so wonderful in record time, and gets rid of a lot of it as well. The city streets, home to much of the action in the 1999 edition, will be but a distant memory after an hour or two. The clock tower? Gone. The park? Gone. The dead factory? Gone. To be fair, instead of that last one, we do get a lab, but with an almost identical one already appearing in two, I'd chalk its inclusion down to Capcom shamelessly deciding to recycle assets, rather than it being a decision focused on what works best for the game. Earlier, I mentioned Nemesis hunting you down, and that is very stressful when it's happening, but the part where that occurs is fleeting at best, and after that, Resident Evil's most infamous monster is relegated mostly to cinematics and middling boss battles. With Mr. To X's revamp being such a success in 2, you'd rightfully expect the return of Nemesis to be equally triumphant, but in the end, he is probably the most underwhelming part of the game. Choice-based progression, the live selection mechanic, and randomization are all done away with too, my personal biggest bugbear. Thanks to those three elements, two people can sit down next to each other, play through the original, and have quite different stories unfold. The order you choose to visit locations in can have smaller and larger consequences. Sometimes it simply means an item or two changes location, sometimes it means encountering Nemesis in a completely different place. 
Choices made whenever a live selection event occurs function similarly. Some enable you to avoid Nemesis or deal with a problem in multiple ways, while one or two might lead to a different outcome for certain characters. That's great, except I have no intention of contributing to your retirement fund. Finally, randomization mixes up the enemies and items in certain areas, with there being more than 70 different permutations between the pair. The three combine to make up Resident Evil 3's unique selling point, its variation, and something so deep being so absent meant its remake never had a hope in hell of living up to its legacy. Most longtime fans of the series, I'd guess, would rank Resident Evil 3 lowest among the series' remakes, just as I have. It's a fun little romp that will keep you 100% engaged, but it feels more like rushed DLC for two, rather than a considered revision of a classic that is able to stand on its own two feet. 3 is not a bad game, nor does it ever lack entertainment value, but at the same time, it's shallow in a Michael Bay movie kind of way, which is something that can't really be said about the other games featured in this video. If Resident Evil 2 were to be judged entirely off the Raccoon City Police Department portion of the game, it would have had a real and genuine shot at taking home this video's top prize. Your first tentative steps into the RCPD's East Wing in particular are perfect. Dark and damp and oddly quiet, even with nothing much going on, the tension borders on being unbearable. Then you come across this poor soul, after which you're ambushed by a gaggle of zombies before good old Marvin comes to the rescue just in the nick of time. Prior to the game's release, I had been somewhat nervous, but thanks to this grisly set piece, my fears were allayed in an instant. Somewhat nervous is actually putting it lightly too, I had been exceedingly anxious. After all, 2's remake was the first of its kind in a very long time, and unlike the first Resident Evil's reworking, fixed camera angles and pre-rendered backgrounds were being ditched for an altogether more modern style. Third-person over-the-shoulder perspectives had worked well enough for other titles in the series, but for a new edition of Leon and Claire's Adventure, a game so visually distinctive, I wasn't convinced. Again, it turns out I needn't have worried, and it's safe to say that by the time I'd met Marvin and the police department began to really open up, I had fallen head over heels. The rest of the RCPD is no less exhilarating either, with Capcom breathing new life into so many of its environments. Nigh on every area is imbued with a fresh sense of dread thanks to a lack of visibility and the moans of distant zombies, and so often, something as simple as traversing a hallway will leave you with your heart in your mouth, especially given what could be lurking around each and every corner. Lickers, an enemy which transitioned from terrifying to trivial fairly fast in the original, are a very different box of frogs, relentless in their pursuit should you make too much noise. Mr. X's star turn as a free-roaming stalker is inspired, his footsteps always causing my blood pressure to spike no matter how near or far away he seems to be. Even the humble zombie has a fresh coat of paint, chunks of them ripping open or falling off completely depending on where you shoot them. Combined with decent writing, solid performances by most of the cast, and stunning visuals, underpinned by Resident Evil's familiar but steadfast survival horror formula, what you get is one of the best parts of any Resident evil. The more time I've spent with 2's remake, though, across my first and many subsequent playthroughs, the less enamoured I've become. Much like with Resident Evil 3, I would never dream of calling 2 a bad game. It's an excellent title by most metrics, but again, it lacks so much of what made the original special to begin with. The marshalling yard is nowhere to be seen, and much more seriously, neither is the majority of the superb city streets escape. The original showed it meant business immediately, handing you control surrounded by zombies and leaving you to fight your way through Raccoon City's streets, witnessing the demise of gun shop owner Robert Kendo along the way. Whereas in 2, there's a brief playable portion in a gas station, which is admittedly done well, followed by an extremely short sprint to the RCPD, and that's your lot. The redesigned lab is frankly ridiculous too. In no way does the technology housed there come close to mirroring that actually available when 2 takes place, and its design, complete with needlessly enormous gaping chasm in the middle, makes no sense. 
Several enemies are also missing too, such as crows, spiders, the giant moth and the evolved lickers, and others have been poorly reimagined. The alligator boss battle wasn't exactly complicated to begin with, but here it's been reduced to little more than a Crash Bandicoot-esque running into the screen sequence. I felt like I'd been transported back to 1997, and not in a good way. While the redesigned ivies, zombies infected by Plant 43, don't hold a candle to the 1998 edition's Day of the Triffids-esque horrors. None of these things I'd describe as major issues, however, and them not being featured is hardly the end of the world when taking into account how solid most of 2's remake is. What is a disappointment of earth-shattering proportions is that the remake's A and B scenarios are practically meaningless. Each character's story is somewhat different, the biggest variation between them being the presence of Ada in Leon's campaign as opposed to Sherry in Claire's. Surprised you made it this far. FBI, huh? What's going on here? Sorry, that information's classified. Where are you going? Do yourself a favor. Stop asking questions and get the hell out of here. But beyond that, a few other scenes and some remixed item placement and puzzles, it's not exactly Christmas. Nothing you do during your first playthrough affects your second run either. Compare that to the original. You could choose to play as Claire or Leon first, and depending on your decision, events would be drastically altered. That's in terms of story, with sweeping changes compared to the remake's tiny tweaks, as well as in a million other ways. Whoever you play as first will have to fight a mutated William Birkin at regular intervals, whereas Mr. X is the main source of trouble for the other, for example. And if you finished both scenarios and played the game two more times but in the opposite order, everything would be different again. You could also so make runs easier or harder courtesy of the zapping system, with your actions in Scenario A affecting Scenario B. Among others, certain items could be taken during your A run or left for your B character, and some enemies could be weakened or strengthened depending on your choices. For all intents and purposes, the original has four unique campaigns, combined with the zapping system, as opposed to the remake which only really has one and a half and no zapping whatsoever. That is a massive, massive letdown, as similarly to the choice-based progression, live selection and randomization being stripped from 3, it feels like the soul of 2 has been torn from it, with the game being far less unique as a result. I understand crafting four campaigns in the present would have been a budgetary nightmare for Capcom, but even just two well-thought-out, properly planned runs, one for Leon and one for Claire, would have been enough. All in all, 2 is a strange beast, as many newer to the series I reckon would place it first or second in their own rankings, while fans of the original, like me, might be more cynical due to some key components being left out. Regardless, where 3 was fun but an abject failure as a remake in my eyes, 2 is serviceable at worst and fantastic at best, and even with its shortcomings, 99% of gamers will likely have an absolute blast with it. I've never been as conflicted about a video game as I was about the original Resident Evil 4. On the one hand, I could see clearly from minute one that it was a revolutionary title. On the other, it represented the end of the good old days for the series, marking the beginning of a transition for the series away from horror and towards action. What made that change especially irritating was that despite my annoyance, I had to begrudgingly admit that Resident Evil 4 was a delight. I feel that same sense of joy playing its remake, but this time without the side of resentment. There's really not a whole lot about it I'd change. Capcom manages to squeeze practically every magnificent moment you remember from the original into this updated offering, whether that's the pitched village battle to begin proceedings, Leon's trek through the castle's creepy maze complete with hellhounds hunting you, or the notorious oven man jump scare. <laughs> Other parts have been tastefully reimagined to work better in the present. This variation of the original sequence involving a statue of Salazar is less ridiculous and better fits the remake, and fighting Krauser properly as opposed to simply hammering buttons during an extended quick time sequence is a welcome change. That's not to say I dislike the 2004 version of the face-off, I love it, but after the disaster that was Resident Evil 6, a lack of quick time events is, for me, by no means a bad thing. It's also generally darker in tone, particularly early on, which I really enjoyed. It's a definite shift from the original, but I consider Resident Evil to be a horror series first and foremost, and so it works for me. 
Regarding the remake's characters, I have issues with a few of the villains I'll get to in a jiffy, but equally, many have been refined compared to their original depictions. Leon's growth from rookie cop in 2 to hardened operative in 4 is more believable across the two remakes, and Ashley feels like an actual person as opposed to a one-dimensional damsel in distress. Luis Serra is the best of the bunch though, his expanded role ensuring he's a far more likeable character than he was previously. A whole heap of sensible tweaks have been made to gameplay too. With standard enemies being incredibly aggressive, the knife is a more important tool than ever before, allowing you to swipe projectiles out of the air, parry attacks and fend off enemies who manage to grab you, among others. Stealth is included too, although I personally find it to be of limited use in most situations, or perhaps I'm just impatient, and a crafting mechanic much like that featured in 2 and 3's remakes but with way more options gives you more control over which weapons you make most use of. Along with these come the smaller changes you'd expect these days, such as general improvements to 4's controls and being able to change weapons on the fly. After 2 and 3, my expectations were that 4 would function similarly as a remake, mimicking its original in many ways but missing out on some of its most important parts. What I didn't expect was the best modern take on a classic Resident Evil Capcom has produced since 2. I struggled to come up with a lot of bad bits for this game, a task made all the more difficult now Capcom has released Ada's Separate Ways campaign. Some may consider it unfair to take it into account, but with it including several parts of the original that I'd missed in the full game, such as the boss battle with U3 and the Resident Evil movie-inspired Laser Corridor, it should at minimum be mentioned. I've already said that I myself think 4's atmosphere being more horror focused is a good thing, but it does mean the game loses some of its cheesy charm at times. Some dialogue classics make the cut, for example Leon's bingo comment at the end of the opening set piece in the village, but many do not. Gone is this absolute cracker, for example. So maybe you have nine lives, but it doesn't matter now, Mr. Kennedy. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Hmm. Say whatever you please. Die, you worm! No matter how silly some of the original may be, it was all a part of the game's memorable mix of action horror and budget B-movie scripting, and some will lament the comedy being toned down. Villains Ramon Salazar and Osman Sadler also appear way less than they should. A lot of the banter between Salazar and Leon is gone, like that clip you've just seen, and Sadler barely has any character whatsoever, not even entering the equation until very late in the day. Your battle against his monstrous form at the end of the game should be a real climactic moment after all the problems he's caused prior, but because you don't come face to face with him all too often, that feeling of finally getting your own back isn't really there. The way 4 is paced if you go from chapter to chapter without worrying about side content is exceptional too. Unfortunately, you feel almost obliged to wander back to previous areas to kill rats or shoot medallions, lest you miss exclusive items the merchant carries, and I see no good reason for artificial backtracking that wasn't in the original to have been inserted here. A couple of the missions involving unique enemies buck the trend, but a lot of it feels like side content that has been shoehorned in because having side content is a trend right now, rather than it being there because because it's actually engaging. Finally, while much improved over the original, Capcom still hasn't managed to nail the island you explore during 4's final third. It's far better this second time around with its reduced length and lack of stupid minigun wielding soldiers, but it's not received enough of a glow up that it can compete with the village or the castle. I'm expecting a few comments telling me these points are nitpicking, and in a way, my criticisms only being nitpicks is actually a very good thing indeed. There really isn't anything in Resident Evil 4's remake that drove me mad like certain omissions in 2 and 3, and that I'm weighing up playing it again only a week or two after finishing my most recent playthrough is the highest compliment I can give. It's very, very entertaining, it includes nearly everything that made the original brilliant, but makes changes that are mostly for the better, and most importantly, Importantly, it proves for the first time since the game I'm about to talk about that Capcom are able to fashion a remake which doesn't cut any corners. Resident Evil's 2002 remake is the best entry in the series, and in my view one of the two greatest horror games ever made, along with Silent Hill 2. Just like the next man, I can be prone to hyperbole every now and then, but I promise you this is not one of those occasions, it really is that good. 
If you were to ask me what constitutes the perfect remake, I'd say the title in question needs to do two things. First, it needs to remain respectful to its source material, and second, it needs to amend and expand upon it in meaningful ways. Three barely does either, two gets a good bit of the way there but misses the mark in key areas, and four is an all-round excellent remake which gets it mostly spot on without taking any huge risks. Resident Evil comes as close to nailing both as I've ever seen from a remake across any genre to this day. The 1996 effort it's based on has not aged well in many regards, with its graphics being the worst offender. Blocky and lacking detail, they're not a deal breaker if you do wish to wind the clock back some 27 years, but many of its scares are going to be significantly less impactful because of them. Its remake, despite being very old itself, still looks astounding even in the present. I remember scarcely believing the screenshots I saw ahead of its 2002 release were real, and much to my shock, the game itself delivered completely on their initial promise. At the time, I considered it to be the most visually impressive video game full stop, and thanks to the recent HD remaster of Resident Evil's remake, it continues to look jaw-droppingly good in the present, too. The sublime fixed camera angles, the superb use of light and shadows such as this silhouette of a zombie banging against a window, the exquisitely detailed character and enemy models set against beautiful pre-rendered backgrounds and the visually upgraded cinematics. It's an aesthetically arresting thrill ride from beginning to end. Environment-wise, much of the Spencer Mansion and its surrounding areas will be familiar if you've played the original, but plenty of new places have also been bolted on to make proceedings feel daisy fresh. Some are amazing outdoor areas such as that surrounding Lisa Trevor's shack. This tomb housing the Crimson Head Elder is a favourite of mine, and the previously flooded basement has been replaced by an entirely new nightmare in the form of the Aqua Ring, perhaps the most impressive transformation of the bunch. Chris! Richard. Enemies will sometimes burst through doors or smash windows to get at you as well, making events feel so much more dynamic. Never before seen items can be found scattered across areas new and old too, including those needed to progress and the new defensive items which act as a get out of jail free card should a monster get the drop on you. Speaking of monsters, there are a pair of brand spanking new beasts you'll have no choice but to lock horns with as well. Lisa Trevor is the more tragic of the two, once a young innocent girl, now an old deformed monstrosity thanks to Umbrella's experimentation, but it's the Crimson Heads who are most unforgettable. Zombies in the majority of Resident Evil games are usually no bother, they are cannon fodder, except for in this game. If you kill them by any other method than decapitation and fail to burn the body, eventually they will rise from the grave, again, equipped with a mean new set of claws and a top speed to rival Usain Bolt. Navigating the game's various locales in the original was a puzzle in and of itself, and the amount of thought every trip requires in the remake increases exponentially with every zombie you kill. When playing as Chris with his limited supplies and increased enemy count, the mansion in particular is as brutal a survival horror challenge as you'll ever likely experience. Mixed in with the brilliance are some negatives, but a good number of them are more down to personal preference. As mentioned, graphically the game is top, top tier, but with that upgrade comes a change in aesthetic. Gone are the bright, colourful hallways of the original, which for me made things more disturbing, replaced by a darker, gothic vibe that makes many areas feel like less believable places. They're certainly scarier, but whether it's in keeping with the spirit of the original is definitely up for debate. Likewise, Crimson Heads might be to some a double-edged sword too. I absolutely adore them, but during the already expanded mansion especially, it could be argued that they create pacing problems, often adding even more backtracking and longer journeys to your time spent there. You will likely return to multiple areas just to burn bodies, and will sometimes feel like you have no choice but to avoid certain hallways and take a longer route if you think one of the more souped-up zombies blocks your path. Voice acting, one of the most beloved and dodgy aspects of the 1996 edition, is also not as improved as much as one might have hoped. It sounds more professional, like the voice actors actually read the scripts, but the quality is still disappointing given how polished nearly every other part of the game is. Ah. Jill. Barry, I didn't mean to get you that excited. Right. Anyway, you should read this. 
There are also a lot less variables in terms of how that story can play out depending on your choices. There are still scenes you can miss, differing character deaths and plenty of endings to uncover, but the complexity of the original remains unrivaled. Some slightly rough edges here and there, however, do not take the shine off one of video games' brightest diamonds, a horror tour de force that is just as extraordinary today as it was back in 2002. Not only is it the best Resident Evil title Capcom has produced, it remains at the top of its genre along with only a handful of 3D frighteners. Resident Evil's other remakes all excel in different ways, but none of them manage to reinvent their core experience anywhere near as well as the original does. It may be a tough cookie to get to grips with in the present, but persevere and you'll hopefully come to the realisation that Resident Evil is the series' best remake by a country mile. Before I finish, I should acknowledge for a final time that while I believe the original's remake to be number one, that doesn't mean I don't think the rest are any good. Three is by far the biggest disappointment of the bunch, but is still a very enjoyable experience, and even though two is missing the original's defining features, it's still an awesome title which has played a huge part in the series' continued revitalization. Four is the best of the modern remakes, even more so when accounting for separate ways, and Resident Evil's remake is in my view one of the best horror games ever created. I'm sure many of you watching will have already played one or more of them already, but if you haven't, I highly recommend playing each and every one of them. Shortcomings aside, you're going to have a terrific time, whichever one you choose. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and zombie slayers. If you enjoyed it, do consider liking, subscribing and letting me know how you'd rank Resident Evil's remakes, and hopefully I'll catch you again soon.